we're gone. We're we're on. All right. Um, so uh, welcome everybody to the uh, May meeting of the History Commission. I have to say I kept trying to make it April, but um, <laughs> but apparently it is actually May. Um, kept going into our April folder for all our stuff. So we're going to call the uh, meeting to order, and uh, we're going to go through our standard FOIA uh, prelude here. Uh, to conduct this meeting wholly electronically, the History Commission needs to make certain findings uh, for the record to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. Sorry for the background noise. Um, these motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. I'm going to start by noting that uh, Commissioners Gretchen Bulova and David Meyer are excused from the meeting tonight. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to call uh, Mary Lipsy. Mary Lipsy in Springfield. Okay, Gretchen's not here. Uh, Carol Herrick. Carol Herrick, McLean. Okay. Uh, Elise Ruff Murray. This is Elise Murray in Vienna. Barbara Nafe. Barbara Nafe in Reston. Anne Stunts. She's muted. Anne Stunts in Vienna. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Uh, Steve Sherman. Yeah, Steve Sherman in Franconia. Okay. Phyllis Walker Ford. Phyllis Walker Ford, Clifton. Barbara Peters. Barbara Peters, Annandale. Ann Barnes. <clears throat> and you're muted. Ann, Ann Barnes. Um, <clears throat> and Gunston, Virginia. Okay. Sally Lyons. Sally Lyons in Colchester. Right. Tammy Manorino. Hi, Tammy Manorino, Mount Vernon, Virginia. Sue Kovach Schumann. Sue Kovach Schumann, Mantua. Um, Lynn Garvey Hodge. Lynn Garvey Hodge, Springfield District. Um, Lynn, did, did anybody else have difficulty hearing Lynn? Lynn, do you want yeah. to do that again? Oh, I'm not muted, I don't think. You're very, very quiet. You might want to up your volume just a little bit. Now you are muted. Or not you muted, but we're not hearing you. I'm unmuted. Okay, you're unmuted. But you're just, you're just really, really quiet. Um, I don't know what to do about that. Even see a volume hit here. Uh, volume control on your computer itself. You have a volume control usually? No, I usually have it on like way high. I was fine last night for the graduation, so I'm not sure. <coughs> a little bit better. All right, let's continue. Um, Jordan Tannenbaum. Jordan Tannenbaum, Springfield <laughs> District, <laughs> Fairfax County. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, good. Okay, great. Just want to make sure. We might have to resort to that for Lynn, too. <laughs> that would be new and unusual. <laughs> uh, Esther McCullough. Esther McCullough, Herndon, Sully uh, District. Okay. Um, I'm Cheryl Rapetti, Sully District, Robert Beach. Bob, are you with us tonight? Did he call in, Denise? I do not see Bob on the line, not yet. Okay, all right. And uh, as I mentioned, David Meyer isn't here. And Subi Medi, did I pronounce that correctly? Medi. Medi. Yes. Uh, so Subi right. Medi from the Drainsville District. Okay. Welcome. All right, so welcome everybody. Um, at this point, I'm going to pass my virtual gravel over to our very quiet vice chair, uh, to Lynn. There you go. 
And um, maybe I'm just not close enough. Is that better? So a little bit better, but yeah, there's something I don't know what's going on with your right. your audio. Can't, can't um, uh, we're just going to have to pay very close attention when you speak. That's all right. Um, so at this point, I'm going, uh, passing that virtual gavel to Lynn so that I might make the appropriate motions. I move that the History Commission certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. Second. Do I have a second. I second Jordan. Jordan seconds. Um, and uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay. Any opposition? Nope. Ayes have it. Uh, second, I move that the History Commission certify that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission and the public to physically attend this meeting in person, and the usual procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the Fairfax County History Commission conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line, and that the public may access this meeting by calling one 844-621-3956 and entering the access code 173-868-4021. This is Perhaps. Esther, second. Thank you, Esther. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any oppositions or abstains? Uh, All right. Number three, the Motion need to dispense with FOIA's usual procedures to assure continuity in government. Um, finally, I move that the History Commission certify that the matters on its agenda today relate to the COVID-19 emergency itself are necessary for the continuity in Fairfax County government and or are, start, are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of the History Commission's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. Do I have a second for that? Second. That was Lynn seconding. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Any any oppositions or abstentions? All right. So Lynn, if you can hand me my gavel back, yep. we will uh, continue. And all right, on with our agenda. So um, we have a fun. Fun meeting tonight and possibly even a short one. <laughs> oh, yay. Yay. Um, so, uh, but we're going to start with welcoming two new members to our team, specifically a new commissioner and our new clerk. And I'm just going to start by uh, welcoming uh, Commissioner Mehdi uh, and uh, ask you to introduce yourself to the group. Oh, um, I'd be delighted to. Um, hello, everybody. Um, so my mm -hmm. name is Subi Mehdi. I am um, a resident of Fairfax County for over 30 years and of McLean um, Drainsville District for over, oh, this is going to be our 28th year. So um, this is, uh, this 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 neck of Northern Virginia is definitely uh, home to me. I am a retired um, public servant um, with the federal government. Um, most of my career uh, has been with in the international uh, assistance field, but also later on in domestic policies uh, related to veterans. Um, I have two grown adult sons uh, who live in different parts of the world. Um, and uh, so when I spoke to Cheryl, she asked me what my experience with the local history was. And um, none in an organized uh, formal way. Um, I am a history buff. Um, and um, uh, keen interest in history. And I've traveled to over uh, 50 countries in the world, so I have a very global perspective of things. Um, and I hope that we'll come to some, some uh, um, 
uh, you know, usefulness uh, uh, in this. Um, I have a lot to learn from you, um, all of you. Uh, what I would like to do is, if it's okay um, with the committee chairs, uh, I haven't uh, decided which committee to join yet, but I think in trying to figure out, uh, learn more about what uh, the committees do, I'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one call uh, or a video meeting with each of the committee chairs um, uh, to get a better feel for uh, what you all do and uh, are there any uh, gaps in your committees that um, that I may be able to fill in terms of, you know, people power? Um, I definitely want to single out Carol Herrick, who is from my district and someone whose name I've heard a lot. And so, Carol, I'll definitely reach out to you, learn at your feet. Um, and I really, really look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. I'll be looking forward to the call. Thank you very much. Sure, Carol. All right. If you're going to you. learn from her feet, you might end up learning tennis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could use that too. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. All right. Welcome, um, indeed. And and we're very excited to have you join us. And I have to say that uh, Subi has some really uh, powerful organizational skills or and uh, I, I think we can make real use of her uh, on our committee. I also want to note that Robert Beach has joined us. Robert, can you um, or Bob, I'm sorry, I'm reading your name, but Bob, can you uh, can you just sound out so that we know we can hear you? Bob, are you connected to us? Send up a sign, Bob. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come back to him and make sure we can we can hear him properly. Um, our next person, a next group member of our new team, our new member of to our team to welcome is Elliot Meyer, our new um, clerk of the of the commission. Elliot, do you want to introduce yourself to the uh, group? Thank you, uh, and thank you all for having me here. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm Elliot Meyer. I um, am a uh, resident of Fairfax City. I was born and raised there, um, and I'm currently a graduate student at George Mason University. <laughs> I'm pursuing my master's of public policy with an emphasis in environmental policy and sustainability. <laughs> um, and I, I just say that I think that there's incredible amount of parallels between uh, historic preservation and environmental preservation and uh, you can't have one without the other and I have always had a personal deep passion for history in general so I'm very honored to be here and to be able to serve the commission and to be a fly on the wall and listen to some very interesting discussions so thank you well, thank you Elliot yeah welcome 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 all right. Um, all right. Uh, I guess we've now just proceed into the meat of our meeting. Barbara, I think I may have accidentally just grabbed Renee's uh, email and bypassed you. That was an, uh, an ac that was accidental on my part. But did I get that vaguely correct in terms of? I thought this was your uh, treasurer's report. Um, this was the least active month in the entire time I have been treasurer. <laughs> Because uh, the only change in our bottom line was uh, interest of fifteen dollars and forty six cents. So um, the the bottom line is forty eight thousand seventy dollars and seventy seven cents. And like I said, the the least action I have experienced. <laughs> All right, thank it's you very, very much. This month. <laughs> oh, and I'm sorry, I you skipped a uh, minute. Way, I liked it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, Dell is, Dell has, after 2020, Dell is good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry, I skipped right over minutes. Um, so I need someone to uh, make a motion that we, uh, or if there's any discussion, anybody have any issues with the minutes that were, uh, that Denise sent out um, for April? I make a I'll motion. Make, go on, Mayor. I make a motion that we accept the 
April History Commission minutes as read and also to pay the clerk. Okay. I second. Yeah. This is Esther. All right. All any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? All right. Motion passes. All right. In terms of unfinished business, um, I wasn't sure, Tammy, if there was anything about River Farm to any sort of updates. Um, just I was going to say just real quickly. Um, the, as most of you probably know, the historic overlay district um, was approved on April 13th by the board of supervisors. Um, and so that's our 14th um, historic overlay district in the county. Um, we're still waiting to find out um, whether the board of supervisors is going to use the new law SB 1457. Um, I believe they're exploring that and um, and I know there's a Mount Vernon Council of Citizens Association has a meeting planned for later on in the month and I think staff is is going to talk about the SB 1457 process, which um, just to update um, that gives the board of supervisors the ability to um, to prohibit uh, subdivision of the property of the historic overlay district and then also um, require public access. So, so that's the final piece that we're waiting on. There's all kinds of um, drama going on with the sale of the property. Um, there's a new offer that's been made by Northern Virginia Conservation Trust and Nova Parks. Um, and then also the board of AHS is having some dissension, which that's been in the Washington Post, but that's kind of aside from our, our business with it. So, um, so we'll find out what what's going to happen with SB fourteen fifty seven. Um, you know, in the next month or two, I suspect. Yeah, I was I was forgetting about the the, the small matter of that overlay district has been approved. Well, it's <laughs> hard to remember what happens in each month. You know, <laughs> you know, we felt like we were almost there at the last meeting, but yeah. So that is um, that's where we're at. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Carol, I don't know if you want to update anybody with regard to the McLean uh, CBC. I know that 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 vote actually got postponed. Uh, well, you've done my report. Yes, it got postponed <laughs> and will come up um, in May, May 26, before the Planning Commission, before it goes to the Board of Supervisors. So I'm hoping to get even more letters uh, in in support of saving the firehouse in McLean. Yeah, it's it's a shame that that the task force isn't embracing that historic preservation it's dynamic. Quite, you know how that can contribute to a, a revitalization a little bit more. It's quite divided in McLean over over that issue. So um, anyway, it's coming up May 26 before the planning commission again. Okay. And there's no, all right. There's nothing more we need to do, Carol. No, I think we've done all we can do unless. Individuals want to write a letter, but it's probably more important. I think if you live in McLean, um, you know, to save the fire station. But if oh, you want so to, we we could tell our friends who live in McLean to write. We could send them some examples of what to write. Sure. Mm -hmm. I um I, I got the firemen to write a letter and um, trying to get them to get some of their friends to write a letter. Oh. I'll get Vienna Fire Department. You got it. Station number two. <laughs> we really are technically number one. No. I was going to say no. <laughs> Don't number put, one, number two. Don't put <laughs> in the letter. <laughs> Can you guys put fires out remotely? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I didn't hear the question, but uh, anyway. All right, and that would be great if you did that. Okay, I'll work on it. Thank you. All right. Um, and uh, we do have a little bit of an update with regard to the Soapstone Connector Association Drive, Jordan, if you want to share what happened with the group. You have to unmute yourself. That's a good place to begin. I was, I was saying, I'm not sure where to begin with this. Um, well, uh, um, technically, we are still waiting. We are still waiting, not technically. We are still waiting for the mitigation plan 
that the FHWA um, uh, needs to put together uh, so that we can see uh, if the parties, the consulting parties and the signatory parties would agree to what is being proposed. Um, that's not just a, as far as I'm concerned, that's not just a rubber stamp. Um, it is important that we know things like who's going to pay for the mitigation, the documentation, what level will the documentation be, and what are some of the other items that we discussed in terms of mitigating the adverse effect determined by the Federal Highway Administration. Um, and um, the, I, I, I should share this, I suppose, with you. Um, that um, I had mentioned at one of the meetings that I had uh, notified Preservation Virginia of this case and um, suggested that this might be a, a, one of the, a case that they would want to include in their most endangered properties. And about a, two weeks ago, I found out that, yes, in fact, they had decided to include the Association Drive Historic District uh, on that list. Um, I am the contact for that, I, I am listed as the contact for that. Um, uh, it is very possible that, uh, and I, I would appreciate it if you would keep this confidential, if you could. I mean, people, it's because there, there have been a number of discussions back and forth about this among the, the, um, the commission in terms of what the commission uh, approved and where the commission <laughs> is. Um, I, uh, I, I certainly will. I, I did this as a private citizen, and I will maintain that um, that I am that that my recommendation was made as a private citizen, and in no way connects with either the the commission or the advisory council on historic preservation. Um, so that is coming out uh, next week. Uh, there'll probably be there, I'm sure there'll be a press release. I believe it'll be covered uh, in the in the Richmond papers, probably in the Post. Um, and I hope it gets a lot of, of play. Um, John Burns and I did speak with the individual for the Preservation of Virginia, who is um, who, who, who is responsible for doing the legwork for this. Uh, and John was very helpful in explaining a lot of the history, the architectural significance of this property. Um, and uh, so that's that's something um, as a sidelight. I don't know that that will change anything, but it will get publicity, um, which I think is important because to me, the failure here um, uh, among ourselves, what, and it continues to be an issue, is the failure to properly identify these properties before they get to the 11th hour. That's really, we saw that with the API building. We saw it with Association Drive. Um, there probably is nothing now that can be done, but at, at an earlier stage, if they had recognized the significance of this property, uh, it's possible that we would be we, there'd be a different outcome. So, um, so that is where we where we are. Technically, they are not in compliance yet until a memorandum of agreement is signed by the State Historic Preservation Officer by the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, and then there will be a variety of, um, of consulting parties that that will sign. We will sign, but uh, we're an invited consulting party. We really have no, we can't stop this process, obviously. Um, uh, and when I have, hopefully I will get a draft of the uh, proposed mitigation and be happy to circulate that and, and share it with all of you. Are there any questions about Association Drive, where we are, where we've been? And where we're headed. Yeah, I thought it was worth bringing up the yeah. um, the, the nomination to the, the you know the, the preservation Virginia nomination just because yeah. it, it, I think it will be a good way of, of highlighting other you know architecture in Reston and and you know people need to sort of start recognizing that even though it was built in the 20th century it actually could still be it's historic. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and that and, modern architecture is now part of the you know things that we need to think about in terms yeah. of preserving. So I mean, a good a good way to think of this is you know, forty years ago, Art Deco was probably not considered significant, or fifty years ago. Uh, so yes, and and this will be considered significant in another thirty or forty years, more so than it is now. Um, but um, yeah, so that's uh, that. And John made that point, and that that's in his comments. Uh, the importance of that. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a good point because a lot of people do read that list and they immediately go to see what's from their area that's yeah. on the list. So I think that was definitely um, an effort worth worth taking the time to do. Yeah. 
Um, I just want to go back to Bob Beach and just confirm, Bob, can you talk to us now if you need to? Want to? Wish to? Bob, can you unmute yourself? I saw him drop out before and then come back in. So I thought. Me too. So I'm going having... to unmute you, Bob, and see. Can you? Can you speak? All right. I'm sorry I muted him and I don't think that he can. He can communicate with us. Okay. Perhaps you wandered away. That's also possible. That, you know, that's why I was yes. like <laughs> coming in back and forth. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, in terms of new business, we didn't really have any kind of formal new business, but I just threw in a couple of items for me to cover quickly just to share with you. Um, one is that uh, the uh, Board of Supervisors has requested that all members of the of all boards and commissions um, for the county read and acknowledge the one Fairfax policy. Um, so last week I sent out instructions. Denise sent out instructions. They're you know just the same instructions, just two different ways of formatting it. Um, and so we are asking all commission members to please do this: read the policy and um, and then go to the there's a link to sign an acknowledgement, an online acknowledgement form. Um, it's just acknowledging that you've read the policy. There is a 30 minute video if you want to learn more about one, the one Fairfax policy and how it works, um, which I can show at our meeting. Uh, it is 30 minutes long though, uh, which is why I didn't, if it was a 10 minute video, we would be watching it right now. Um, but it, you know, it is kind of a big chunk of meeting time. So you are, uh, I, you know, the link is pro been provided in both the emails that Denise sent out and the ones that I sent out, uh, and you can view that on your own. If you are legitimately, if you actually are very in interested in learning more about this policy and in seeing that video, I would be happy to, we can place that on our agenda um, for an upcoming meeting and we can actually do that. Um, I'm just not sure how familiar you all are with one Fairfax. It's been around for a while. They've been talking about it for a while. So I'm kind of assuming most of us are familiar with what the policy is um, you know, as a, uh, an equity and inclusion policy for Fairfax County government. Um, related yeah, to send it out sure, again. the uh, email with the instructions. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And they actually are also posted in the uh, minutes, not the minutes, sorry, the meeting materials folder that's associated with tonight's meeting. Um, but I will resend that email. I figured I would do that. Um, so it is kind of a long process, you know? So Barbara, it is kind of a long process to get in there. So just be patient with it. Okay. Uh, you turned up your volume. Yes, you did. Now you we know can hear what, you. You know what it is? It's a WebEx issue. Was it ah. me? It was a WebEx issue. Weird. Somehow okay. WebEx had me way down. I'm not quite sure how that happened. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. So yes, it is. So you know, if if this if we were meeting in person, we would just pass the paper around the table and we'd all sign it, and it would be done in five minutes, and it would be you know not a big issue. Um, so. And they're trying to make it easy for you. So they. So what happens is that when you sign in onto this online link, you have to put in all this information, your name and, and what commission you're with and all that. Um, so and and it's it's taking all of that information so it can put it into the form for you so that when the form comes up, all of that's all filled in and you sign your name. Um, so I don't know. Name it does. But I, I am still electronic. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Barbara. No, I was just I was gonna just gonna her say. name is still electronic. Whatever happens is still going to be an electronic signature. Right. But I, I have reached a, an overload on my tolerance for all of this online. And so I probably have just ignored it and I apologize. Uh, um, I, I understand. <laughs> really? <laughs> 
but yeah, no, I, I and I, I figured that we would probably wind up sending the email out a couple of times. I know that I, you know, see things, I kind of acknowledge it. I'm like, oh, I'll get to that. And then it goes down below the scroll and I forget about it. Um, and so that's, that's just life in, you know, life in, in, the, in the cyber world these days. Um, but we, we will, we do need to have, uh, you know, we will be, Janice and I will be reminding you to get that done. Um, oh, I just also wanted to mention as part of that uh, one Fairfax uh, policy, uh, I was given the opportunity to do some training called uh, groundwater approach to equity. And I've done a number of these uh, sorts of you know, inclusion and equity trainings. This one was really excellent. And, uh, you know, I don't know if um, Denise are, are other uh, commission members going to be given an opportunity to take that training. Do you know? I, I don't believe so. Um, I, my understanding is it's um, very expensive and neighbor, neighborhood and community services uh, had open spots in their training and therefore they opened it to um, some of the uh, some of the other BACs. Okay. So I don't um, I I actually tried to get in on the training and, and I was told no. <laughs> so oh. um, yeah. I, I don't I don't believe that it's going to be offered. Um, I mean, if there is an opportunity, I will certainly let the, the commission know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really worthwhile and I will uh, go. I put, you know, I, I selected one piece, uh, I think, to post uh, in our, our um, materials folder. Uh, I will, you know, post more of that if you're interested. Um, there were other sorts of things, uh, you know, uh, videos and, and the like that were related to this issue of, of equity that were also included in that um, were mentioned in the, uh, the video. So you might want to sort of like skim through the video and take a look at some of the, the other things that are in there if you're interested in this topic at all. Um, all right, and another issue coming up is um, resuming in-person meetings. Apparently, and Denise can correct me if I'm wrong, I understand that the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors will actually be meeting in person in June. Is that correct, Denise? That is correct. And I don't think we have, as of yet, have any kind of directive with regard to our meetings. I'm not even sure how, uh, if the library, I guess the libraries have opened up again, sort of, but I don't even know if we have a place yet. Uh, but I just wanted you to start thinking about um, whether or not in-person meetings are within your comfort zone. Uh, I like the commute. I like this commute. It's a really good one. That's a good, that's for sure. A question I have is, um, is, is the, because we know they met sort of in person last year. Are they going to fully meet in person like normal? You know? Yeah, I, I believe it will look something like they were doing last year with the plec plexiglass between, you know, in the chamber and the plexiglass between each member. I also yeah, believe yeah. that they'll have, they'll be wearing masks. So there's, yeah. there will be, you know, distancing measures taken and, and all of that. So yes, fully in person, but with um, measures taken to um, separate. Yeah, the way they, so a lot like last, a, por a portion of last year. Hmm. Yeah, before the holidays and uh, before, yeah. 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 Did, um, I can't remember, did planning commission do the same thing? I just don't remember. So you mean that with the distancing? Yeah, did they yes. meet in person? Yeah, in the, yes. In the they, last summer? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And then, and then they followed the board um, when the board went to virtual meetings. Okay. Thank you. But we don't really have an option for distancing if we meet in person. Yeah, I I did not realize, Barbara, that um, that the the, super, the board of supervisors had met with barriers and the like. That sort of just you know those sort of protections. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was a you know all or nothing kind of uh, uh, you know thing. Um, so yes, we don't have that sort of uh, those sorts of. Um, dividers or you know meeting space right now so i wouldn't yeah. expect that we're going to be looking at this too soon but just just a heads up that that indeed you know there is some movement in that direction 
Right. I guess our first our first thing is the library having their meeting rooms open. That's right. kind of the first Threshold. consideration. Um, also, a comfort zone question, sort of, I, and I don't know if we want to do a formal vote on this, but I did want to get at least some idea of um, uh, a feedback in terms of level of interest and consent, which is that um, I sent you all a link to a Dropbox folder for our History Commission notebook that Debbie put together a while ago. I updated those materials. I don't know how many of you took a, you know, gave it, you know, took a peek and tried to use that link. I think like it's just a hand, show of hands of folks who, who did. Nope. I think Barbara I thought said you sometimes I have trouble with Dropbox, but it, it opened, it didn't, it didn't start asking me what my password was. It just, it didn't work for me. It didn't for you it, at all link. I couldn't get I I texted you, Cheryl, um, about that. So I just gave up. Well, I knew that there was one thing where you, you tried it before I sent out the link. Yeah. Um, and so so this link is different. It shouldn't request any kind of password or anything like that. It should just open up those folders. Why do we I, want just, to do it this way? Um, so we were use, making use of something called ShareFile for some of the committees. Um, so there are some committees like the African American Inventory Committee. Last year, the, the Confederate Names Committee made extensive use of their share file. Um, and you know, I don't know if the if if Felice, you'd be interested in doing this for like inventory committee because we Denise was setting up a, a share file for the inventory committee. The difficulty is that the um, the, the account for share file is limited in terms of uh, storage space. And so the county makes those share file folders disappear in 30 days. They only last 30 days at a time, which is kind of not the same time frame that we do committee work in. So uh, I was thinking of setting up a, uh, a history commission Gmail uh, address opening up a Dropbox account with that, and then committee members could have access to that password, could create folder, you know, we could set up a set of folders by each committee, and then within these folders, you can set up subfolders and files however you wanted to, because you would have access to the Dropbox account, but that for most of us, you would just send out a link, and then people can see the files using that link. Um, but it's something we can discuss committee by committee, but I just wanted to sort of bring it up, um, you know, at, to the commission as a whole, you know, that there is, you know, we could potentially work that way and that would be a replacement for, um, for the share file. I appreciate having it because, um, you know, for example, the Confederate names committee last year, you know, I, I would be searching through my inbox to try like, oh, somebody sent out like the latest version and it's so much easier to go one place. Um, where it can be shared in, instead of searching through for the email and figuring out which was the most recent copy out of all of those things. Okay. Dropbox sort of works, you know, it doesn't have a lot of, um, I, mean, it, I find it frustrating at times, mm -hmm. but if you're just, if you have just the link, you know, you just go to that folder and you should just be able to read those files and it's just a place where you can go to see things. Mm -hmm. Whereas Google tends to throw Google Docs at you and <laughs> um, and that can be you know, <laughs> difficult, yeah, uh, for some people. But, but that, the assumption is that we're only using. I'm, this, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Barbara. The assumption is we're only using it for history commission, and I've had a variety of organizational, you know, things that want to use it. And I find it just way too complicated to for it to know which one I'm being when I'm when I'm trying to use it, and I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. With so the 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 account would be connected to a history commission. It would be like history commission at gmail dot com, um, and so it wouldn't be linked to your addresses or your personal Dropboxes. Um, and and then in terms of what committee members would receive from the committee chairperson would be just a link to the um, to the files. 
so you wouldn't you know there shouldn't be any kinds of it's not like you'd be logging into your dropbox account um you'd just be using that you know that link to um for, for committee chairs they would have to use the gmail password and and address in order to create folders and to upload files um, but, but then i have to find the link from the right person for the dropbox and files i'm looking for right which is just as complicated as finding them other ways okay mm -hmm. all right all right um okay i think any other comments any other issues, concerns? Anybody need to bring anything else up before we go on with staff reports? Cheryl, mm -hmm. are you? Did you insert my little minute down with the other committees? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna. Ha I'll call on you first um, for Thank committee you. reports. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. I do have one. Uh, one question. It's kind of related to the Dropbox issue. Is there have been a few times where um, where it would have been really helpful for me to have. Uh, have a copy of the summary of um, of the um, what's on the historic inventory. Like you can go out and look at the master list um, and see what's on the historic inventory for Fairfax County, and it's got a short description on there. But to have the full page summary, um, for instance, like a property like Wellington. Well, I have that because I've you know I've gotten it from the library or from historic records before. But, but if I'm looking up, like, for instance, the Eleanor Kennedy shelter, like, I didn't have that one in my files. But especially since we're remote and I'm not going to the library all the time, I thought, oh, it'd be really good to be able to see that summary. Uh, but that is, there's no um, public facing uh, list of those summaries. And I thought that's something that could go in a Dropbox. Or if there's a different way to make that public facing, I think that would be really helpful for us. I mean, I don't know if other commissioners have run into that difficulty but um but I, I would love to be able to to pull those up from my computer Denise that would really be something I'd throw to to, to you in terms of it's the big files yeah. are they all like on a share file uh, in a share file folder Denise we, um, I'm sorry were you is it Elise or Denise I couldn't tell sorry that was Denise Denise to me um, well, we are, we have been undertaking, if this isn't the time that I was going to talk about this, but, um, we, I'll just go ahead and, and, um, and the inventory committee has seen a demo, a demo of a map, a GIS application that we have been working um, through um, at, at DPD that would allow um, those site reports to be linked to a GIS layer. So, um, for instance, you would go online and go to um, GEM or, or I guess it's Jade, uh, the publicly facing, and um, open up that map and click on an inventory site and a uh, population of fields would pop up and give you statistics about that inventory site, facts about the inventory site, but then also it would have the, the site summary linked to that site. So right now it's um, we we have it's been a long term multi year project to get this done, and I know that they're almost completed. I've um, received emails last week that you know they're getting ready to show it to us, and at the moment. Um, our intention is just to have it um, internally facing. It would be it's a tool for us as well because we we are in the same boat. We're having to either physically go find the forms or um, we've digitized most of them. So, in, but we we have the same difficulties. Um, so having that available um, at the click of a button is going to be helpful for us. Um, the next step would be to bring it to the inventory committee to show them what this would look like. And if they, you know, make some kind of um, thoughtful discussion and decision about whether we want to turn it publicly facing or not. So that's that's where we are with that. Now, if there's a separate effort that you all want to have so that just the history commission can have access to the site reports. Um, you're, you're right, it would be quite a lot of data because they have uh, photographs, but if we flatten them, 
you know, if you don't need high quality photographs, if we're just um, giving uh, low density PDFs, it might not be at, um, take up that much space. I don't know what a Dropbox account, how they, you know, how they measure space or, or how much, how, whether there's a charge per gigabyte. I don't know. You know so um, that would be back to the history commission. Yeah, yeah, the history, the um, the free drop. So that was one reason why I'm talking about Dropbox because it it gives you something like two gigabytes for free. Is it or two? It, it's a fairly generous, you know, space. I don't know if, and you're talking about PDFs. That shouldn't be too bad. If we were talking about full high, um, you know, high high quality photographs, yeah, we might fill that up very quickly. Um, right. Yeah. I would but like yeah, I, I remember now the GIS uh, demonstration. That was pretty cool. And I, I know that there are public facing um, similar maps that you can do where you can click on the uh, a planning map and then find out, uh, you know, connect in with uh, the zoning and planning uh, forms that, you know, is this, you know, what, who, who pulled a, burning, a building permit in my neighborhood? You know, you can click and find right, that right. sort of thing. Graphic. Yeah, it would be very similar to that, but the added bonus would be that the PDFs of the site reports would be attached. So you, you would actually get that site summary. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Kind of, yeah, kind of get cool. there, Tammy. <laughs> 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 we, we, I'll talk to Denise and, and we'll see about uh, whether or not, um, you know, uh, get a sense of what what the average uh, file size is and see whether or not we could post it onto a Dropbox that would be limited are, to the History Commission. Some that there are some that shouldn't be on there. For instance, you know, some archaeology sites. Right. Um, you might not want the entirety to be out there public facing. Um, and I totally get that. So it's worth a conversation, a thoughtful conversation um, about how that would work. Okay. Sounds good. I will make a note. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I didn't make sure that all of our staff were present and accounted for and could speak to us. Hopefully you all are. Uh, we'll start with uh, Liz. Would you like to uh, present, give your staff report for today or this month? Hopefully everybody can hear me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the um, uh, Archaeology continues to um, continues our work with the Lincoln Lewis Vinoy property with Riverbend, um, uh, continuing shovel testing uh, on the site for the uh, closing of an old uh, trail that's uh, eroding into a river and the establishment of a new trail. And then also, uh, we're about to start field work at Green Spring Garden, where there's a proposed moon gate going in. And probably a year or so ago, there was a, um, a national, not NPR, but PBS had a special on Beatrix Rand, and actually there was information on the moon gate there. And I tried to go back to see if that was something that could be viewed by interested people, but apparently it's it's uh, limited in its availability. Um, last month, I had announced that Amy Wells had um, uh, been, had uh, been selected for the Heritage Resource Specialist Senior Archaeologist position and that Elizabeth Painter's position um, uh, as a staff archaeologist lab director had become permanent, uh, but I failed to put it in our uh, staff report last month, so it's in there uh, now. And as of Friday, April 23rd, Elisa Pettit defended her dissertation, so as of May, she, the end of May, she will be Dr. Pettit. So uh, if you are talking to or uh, are in contact with Elisa, give her your best wishes on that. Um, one thing in talking about the uh, up, 
upcoming uh, well, when a discussion of River Farm. Um, River Farm is going to be presented at the Architectural Review Board on May 13th. Uh, not, I, I'll be attending that, but I, it is on the agenda for that. And as well, uh, the uh, Archaeological and Museum Collections Facility and the archaeology that was done um, in preparation for the collections facility. Both of those will be going to the ARB in May. Um, we've worked on, uh, of course, um, I'm on a number of the committees for the History Commission, so uh, I'm pleased to be participating in those. Other things that uh, have occurred within the last month, include um, participation in, on a team for the dredging of Lake Akatink and um, the potential impact to that is where they put the spoils to dry before they're uh, trucked off to their final destination. Um, our collections facility um, has moved on to uh, um, a um, develop a, a conceptual phase and so um, we are, there was a, a, um, a, a, a design phase so that has uh, kicked off so we are serving on that committee as well as representatives from Park Authority Planning, Heritage Conservation and a number of other um, groups. Um, uh, this past weekend, Friends of Fairfax Archaeology and Cultural Resources and uh, Gunston Hall and uh, Archaeology and Collections sponsored a tour of Abingdon Plantation that was given by Henry Ward, who was the archaeologist with um, uh, the Airports Authority. So um, that was that was very well attended. Other things going on in a general um, sense, um, we have been, archaeology has been working uh, with members of the descendant community, um, African American members for signage at Freedom Hill and a couple of other locations in that. Um, in that area, interpreting um, African American contributions to the history there. As well, we are um, rebranding Civil War trails markers on Parkland, and those are um, um, here and you know um, being finalized. Um, other things we're working on we continue to have our county-wide role with the Park Authority working on projects, both, you know, development reviews and reports associated with development reviews, um, stream restorations and other Department of Public Works Environmental Services projects, uh, projects with VDOT, with cell towers, easements and other um, things like that. So we continue to remain busy on the public side and uh, assist uh, the Department of Planning and Development in the county with projects that, um, you know, where there are archaeological components. So we're continuing to move forward. And um, if there are any other questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, Liz, this is Barbara. I have a question. Um, where are you on acquiring the equipment that we funded? Okay, the equipment that you funded has been ordered. It is not in hand yet, but the, the ordering is in process. Um, it has to, uh, there are hoops to be jumped through, but at this point in time, it's a matter of all the, all the approvals have been in place, all the paperwork has been submitted. Um, we had a moment where we all held our breath because they came back and said there were going to be um, 
new requirements if you were ordering iPads and we all kind of, you, you heard the collective <gasps> like that, but as it turned out, we were grandfathered in that because we had our paperwork in already. So I'm hoping that by the time we come to the meeting next month, we will have those in hand. Good. Well, I and know. Thank you and thank you very much again for that. Um, uh, that your efforts on our behalf. Knowing knowing very well the hoops and loops and everything you have to do, um, I'm I'm encouraged and that's exciting. So thanks. Anything else? Well, thank you very much. Cheryl, I believe you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I was just saying uh, thank you, uh, Liz. And uh, for Heritage Conservation Branch, is that Diana that was going to be reporting? Yes, is that the here. Diana you were talking to at the beginning? Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> here you are, Diana. Um, All right, cool. Um, and so I apologize, Diana. Diana. I, I didn't um, include you on some of these uh, 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 reports. I, I'll make sure I get everybody uh, next time. Oh, okay. You're fine. Um, so, updates from museum collections. The Sally Foundation loan agreement was renewed through 2024. The collections manager continues to be an active member in the collections facility planning team, providing input and information as requested. Uh, she also provided collections listings to the History Commission Chairman Cheryl Repetti. Um, and operation. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. that's just. A um, in operations and maintenance projects, a request for proposal or RFP for a historic structure report and treatment plan was sent to the approved contractors for Banks House. Um, Banks House is also in the process of um, getting plexiglass added um, to the doors and the um, wood coverings are being removed. So that actually started happening today. Um, Staff completed an SOP on posting open RFPs for treatment of historic structures in the county. And an informal bid conference was held for the stabilization work on the kitchen at Ashgrove. That was on Monday. Um, with our volunteers, last month we had 25 volunteers come out to help with the Ashgrove landscape cleanup. And the next HSBC event is a landscape cleanup scheduled for this Saturday at White Gardens. And I believe Bob is going to be reporting on the resident curator program updates. And so if you all have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions or comments for Diana? Um, and Diana, we won't go anywhere because uh, Bob, can we, can you speak to us yet? Can you hear me? Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Sure. Um, all right. So uh, you, it, we can um, wait on on you know your the committee report for you. I just wanted to make sure. So. Oh yeah, sure. No problem. It, it, you know, <laughs> uh, left us. Um, all right. So thank you so much, Diana. Virginia room, Chris, you're up. Oh, you tell us everywhere. what's happening in the library. The staff report was uh, sent out for your perusal. Happy to take any questions on that. Um, it's been a busy month uh, with teaching classes, giving presentations, new collections are available. Uh, yearbooks were donated by the Herndon High School librarian, so we're excited to add those to the collection. We've been working with uh, Denise's department on a variety of research projects, and I actually got to see her in person today, which was a lot of fun and definitely the highlight of my week. The efforts to digitize the Fairfax Herald are moving forward. Library of Virginia has assembled the microfilm and they supposedly are going to start digitizing soon. Harold Samay of the Library of Virginia expects issues from 
1886 to 1963 should be publicly available online by August. I'm not holding my breath because that seems like a super, super quick turnaround, but uh, that's what he's assured me. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, one thing that didn't make it into the report was last week, somebody from the Fairfax County Economic Development Authority called us and said that, uh, hey, we've got binders and carousels of slides of images from the county from about the 60s to 1980s. Would you like them or should I just toss them? And he said, yes, definitely. We would love them. So we have a cart full of slides, um, real to real audio recordings that went with slideshow presentations put on by the um, Economic, Economic Development Authority in, in the 80s. So uh, I'll have to digitize those at some point, but super excited to get those. Um, but happy to take any questions you've got. I love that you're super excited about economic opportunity uh, talks. <laughs> There's some really great slides, like uh, um, Tyson's, not Tyson's Corner, um, Seven Corners uh, Shopping Center, uh, back when it had that light lit up uh, oh, yes. Seven Corners. There's a great color image of that. Um, so many cool things. That's the one that sticks out automatically, but there's just so many cool things in there. I can't wait to digitize those and make those accessible to everybody. It's true, and you don't usually take pictures of some of some of these businesses, you know, on a regular basis. So yeah, and that was the other thing. Tyson's Corner. There's like a complete inventory of, of all, uh, pictures of all the stores that were at Tyson's Corner Mall in the, in the 70s and in the 80s. So that's it's it's going to be a gold line for people who are into that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely part of our cultural like yearbook landscape. ads. <laughs> all right. Um, Denise, tell us Hi. all about what's going on in department planning and uh, development. Right. I, well, I'm sort of with Chris. Um, if you have any specific questions about my um, staff report, which I was distributed prior to the meeting and then also included in the expanded agenda, I'm happy to answer them. The two updates that I do have for you, one was mentioned already that um, the Architectural Review Board will be briefed on the design guidelines uh, for the Wellington at uh, River Farm HOD in this upcoming meeting on um, May 13th. So that's one piece that was not in my staff report already. And then the second one is that um, staff will be giving an update to the Fairfax City Community and lis Listening and Learning Sessions on June 3rd um, on the county's efforts regarding Confederate monuments and Confederate names. So that's the other the other piece that wasn't already in my staff report. Interesting, yeah. That and, and, and learning thing has been that Fairfax City's doing has been really interesting to to try to keep up with. You know, they're doing regular evening lectures on history followed up by conversations and um and there's a lot there's a lot on the uh their website about it if you if you've missed it and some of the recordings are still there i think right barbara i think i think um a number of the speakers sessions are still on that's neat that your staff guys are going to do that too denise yeah it should be interesting I think they've invited uh, two other jurisdictions to join the conversation as well. Oh, June 3rd? June 3rd. Yeah, that sounds interesting. It's the day after the History Commission meeting. <laughs> yeah, Thursday, no ways. Yeah. Well, I, I, Anne, I appreciate your positive comments regarding the, this initiative. Oh, I didn't know you were on. I, I, I was going to say, I was just about to say, by the way, yeah, David did just join us. <laughs> um, not it's, just joined it, joined us it, a little while ago. It is really good, David. It's, I'm a, right. I'm a, I just really enjoy it. Well, thank you. And I, I appreciate everybody's interest and your uh, logging on and watching, of, of course these the subject matter we're sponsored the city is sponsoring it but all of the programs uh really know no uh, boundaries between the city and the county when you talk about the, the northern virginia regional experience with respect to race whether it's uh, enslaved persons segregated schools 
or, or any of those issues um, or subject matter. So um, all of you, we're going to continue to do this. We've, we're to the extent that we can archive the presentations. We will. A couple of the scholars have understandably have said that their um, presentations are somewhat copyrighted, so they've asked us not to post the recordings of their presentations. But most of the most of the presentations are going to be available if they're not already, and. Um, we also, after the presentations, we have breakout sessions where people can go into different groups, and these are facilitated by the George Mason Center, uh, the, the Carter Center for Conflict Resolution. And these have been very, there have been very thoughtful conversations and discussions, and uh, a lot of people do more listening than speaking, which is, uh, I think, very affirming. But I appreciate your your, your comments. and. Everyone here on the on the commission is certainly welcome to participate. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I've listened to I've gone to some of the sessions. I haven't done you know the participant part of it, but the the presentations have been excellent. Um, they probably don't really want us. <laughs> right. Yeah. <exactly. laughs> But I've been kind of oh. interested about how that process, that part of that process has yes. been working. And, and, yes. Uh, and, and, you know, our next steps in terms of, of this is why we are interested in hearing from the county, because we are really in uncharted waters with respect to the next steps we take in terms of how we frame decision making. And um, this is still a, a, a very sensitive subject for which there are many differences of opinion about street names and, and um, uh, monuments in the city seal. So um, we're hoping to build upon this, this new rapport, but we're still, we have a lot of, of, of challenging work, but also a, a great opportunities to um, in, in, in the next few months. So, thanks. I, I before we leave uh, Denise's report, I do want to point out that uh, if those of you who may not have had an opportunity to read it, part of the report was included that an update on the Civil War trails markers. Um, Mary uh, and and uh, I have been you know, working with the county attorney to look into um, the issues related to the Civil War trail markers. And uh, the county attorney is in the process of finalizing um, a draft uh, response to our questions, Mary. Uh, and um, and they've been doing a, you know, I, I, one of the things that I've learned is that there is no such thing as a simple question to the county attorney's <laughs> office. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, they've been doing a very, very thorough research uh, job that we in no way anticipated or expected them to go launch into. but. Hopefully, we'll have some some answers and inter and information to share with the commission later on. Uh, committee reports. Let's start. Uh, Barbara asked that uh, you know that she be able to give a little uh, brief update with regard to the Confederate Names Committee. So I'm going to start with Barbara. Thank you. Um, this is um, again um, because we've had um, some interest. We first of all, some of the markers that. Um, are listed have changed and will change. Um, we've had some citizens uh, contact one contacting a supervisor's office, the other contacting us about uh, questions of individuals that are or not listed in the report. Um, one had to deal with a, a a street name and concern that it wasn't included. And so, thank you, Chris. We we did research. He led the research effort on that, and so did Cheryl. Thank you. Um, so, out of all of this came some questions and um, the way the report was completed, it was a moment in time, actually six months in time. And so, um, Chris's suggestion, I said, how do we do this? We already have an addendum with a couple of items in it. And I know Denise has mentioned that um, Supervisor Gross has pointed out that a couple of streets that 
were identified as just a bit in Fairfax County actually or not. So that'll that'll be a, a, a notation as well. So as you all know, we have the, the research collection is organized in the Virginia room. And so Chris is going to maintain an addendum or addenda, however you want to do it. And his suggestion was that perhaps once a year that we make a little progress report and we can load it onto our website. So this is just to let you all know. And if any of you um, is contacted, um, let us know and we'll see if we can provide the answers. So it's just, it's a brief update, but it's important because the questions were, are you going to change it? No, that's the report is there, but that's why we have the addendum. So any questions, happy to answer. I had two interesting questions today related to it that I did not expect. It was from citizens asking when the paper version was coming out. Oh, <laughs> oh and, and it was serious. So I thought I will, it's easy enough to get a quote or do find out how to do it and see if anybody's, if it's in the realm of anything we would ever be interested in. Um, it's it will take five minutes and we just see or print on demand. I was shocked, but but the point was made then that I mean, you librarians will know better. Would librarians like a paper copy for their shelves or? But these were these were individuals. And really quite sincere and, and urgent about how much they want it in their house. Well, I will, I, I don't know. I will add a little, um, a little, another postscript. And that is, as Cheryl announced, Ann and I spoke at, at Supervisor Alcorn's town hall and presented um, information on, on the, on the Confederate names inventory and received, just as we had done from the supervisors, we, re, we received uh, kudos again for the commission and for the work done. And some of the people in the audience were those who, uh, originally didn't want anything to do with it because they were disagreeing with what they thought was going to happen. And so for them to um, offer praise, it's, it shows how much, how well we did and the quality of our work. Someone has said it's, it's a Fairfax history. It's Fairfax history. I know it's called Confederate Names Inventory, but really it's more than that. So anyway, that's where I am if you have any questions. And that's a big that, that takes up a lot of shelf space and 539 pages. <laughs> it must be this, it must be three pages, three inches fat. It's like the big Columbia dictionary, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you, Cheryl, for letting me talk. Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate the up uh the, the update. And uh, I think that sounds like a great way of handling those, you know, just having a regular progress report. Um uh, uh, History Conference. Uh, you're muted. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip this around and do awards first, if that's okay, because I have some fun awards things to talk about. Is that all right? Anybody have a problem with that? Hearing none, we'll carry oh, forth. Okay, first of all, I want to say uh, welcome, Elliot, and welcome, Sab Sabhi. Did I say that correct? Sab Sabhi? Mm -hmm. Subi? Uh, Subi. Subi, like Subi. S -S -U -E. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Glad to have you guys on board. Um, also, this is not in the agenda, but I graduated last night, guys. And it was, yeah, it was, you know, not like it would have been if I was 22. Okay. But I was up till after midnight. So anyway, but it was, it was grand. Hillary um, even zoomed in from France and her time would have been 3 to 4 a.m. And I'm just thinking she's used to that anyway. So anyhow, but so all of that is, is behind me. So I will not be able to stay for all of your history commission meetings all the way through. All right, so let's talk about awards here for a minute. Um, and if anybody new on the commission would be interested in a committee, um, we we have a space left from Greg uh, Wilson, so let me plant that large seed. Um, 
I sent an email out today to uh, the Connection newspapers and also to the National Portrait Gallery. The Jack Hiller Award, we really want to highlight. And a couple of months ago, I tried to track down um, Marion Hiller to see if we could do a little PR about the uh, award in February, for, you know, to honor Martin Luther King's birthday. And I didn't get a phone call back. I didn't get a phone call back today. Bless Phyllis's heart. She gave me a different number for Marion. And Marion and I had a wonderful conversation. So uh, we're going to try to do a, um, and the awards committee has already seen an email to this effect, a, uh, an article in the connection to talk about the History Commission's awards, but specifically the Jack Hiller Award, and maybe try to highlight Jack's um, photograph of Martin Luther King Jr. It is, however, at the National Portrait Gallery, so there, we, need, we need to get some clarification as to whether or not we can uh, use it, even though it is, it's housed there. So I've got a uh, an email into them. Um, also, another important piece, I canvassed the awards committee today, and although it was a, a three to one uh, vote, we are extending the awards date to the 1st of August, to the 1st of August. So if anybody you know is interested in submitting something uh, to our little committee, please let them know we have some time to be able to do that. And hopefully if we can get this article out there then we can give the awards a little bit of a um, little bit of a push okay um i think that's it for awards anybody else from awards committee have anything to say lynn this is mary yes mary um uh, for the 275th we went through ollie which i believe was has a photography club and they did uh -huh. the then and now photos for oh. for the um exhibit mm -hmm. and Gretchen mm -hmm. has the contact with that group i believe it's a class or a club or something uh -huh. like that but it was through george mason's ollie so i'm just suggesting that you might want to ask gretchen who she contacted because yeah. they did wonderful work and they might be they interested did. in participating yeah. yeah that's a great that's a brilliant that's a brilliant idea mm -hmm. um mary do you have an ollie contact for me no it would be gretchen Gretchen Bolova contacted them. I, I know you've spoken over there a few times. That's why I was asking. Oh, okay. no. Yeah. All right. But, so before and after, is that what, what is it called? Then it and was, now? It was then and now. And what year would that have been? 2017 in the summer, June 2017. Okay. Okay, because we've got two categories in uh, going on in there. So that would be, that would be wonderful. That would be yeah. great. Um, and so commissioners, uh, now that, that Mary's spoken up, let me also encourage you, if somebody in your district, Carol Herrick has been very, very good about finding folks in her district to, to nominate. If anybody in your district you feel really deserves a little bit of an accolade, um, go to our awards page, see if anything there seems to fit. You know, we do give out lifetime achievement awards and uh, we, we certainly would, would be happy to continue the tradition of, of making that the, the launch of the history conference. So that's my next piece. Um, and Lynn, before you go, can I yeah. show this? This is the result of our grant. This is, this is um, uh, Shelley Mastron in Reston, and this is the book that was published. And we gave, oh. her, we gave her a grant to um, help with the publication of it. And it's, um, I know Denise has ordered a copy, Anne has ordered, I have it, it's fascinating. Nice. I, and what it is, is the historical geography of Fairfax County around 1960 with great illustrations and everything. So I did want to mention it during the awards because this is yeah. the product of, product of um, our contributions. So it's, it's available at the Reston Museum, but anyway, you know, that was, that was sure. a public a publications grant. It was well, it was through, it was a grant through yes for publications. Yeah, good. It was small. It was um I think five hundred maybe. But it added to it, and she had the G um GMU um GIS people. Oh, it's the thing that Sue Kovacs Schumann bought, got a few years ago. Didn't she get a publications grant? Yes, I, I, I did. And most of the money has gone back to the Virginia room, and I have a little bit more <laughs> that I owe them. Oh, yes. And the book comes out June 14th. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. That's your Mantua book, right? 
Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. But so I know what we, this is what we did. So thank you. Yeah. Didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. But. No, 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 no. That's all right. So Barbara, do you think that this is something that we could take a look at as a, a an achievement award or um, or is that too self-serving since we kind of funded it? I don't know. What, what yeah. do you think? Yeah, I, I. Yeah. Or is that double dipping? That's kind um, of. It, it well, kind of, it, it, it shouldn't get a monetary uh, amount, but, you know, a, a lifetime achievement or a distinguished yeah. service award or something like that. No, no I think, um, you know, things that we contributed to aren't eligible for monetary awards. Right. So but there's other non monetaries. Right, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Well, Barbara, think about it. Go to our awards page and see if anything there kind of pops out. But I really appreciate you bringing that up. That's okay, good. that's good. She talked to a lot of people, and and the commission was one of them. So I'm glad we were able to support it with some money. So okay, all right. So the other uh, piece about the awards is, and uh, the awards committee just met last Wednesday, so it wasn't even a week. What well, was just now a week ago, um, and then my life just took on insanity. I, I was asked and nominated by my class and faculty to speak at graduation last night. So everything from Wednesday on was all about that. Um, we do have a name for the conference, and we're really excited about it. Uh, you've already heard tonight about one Fairfax. And uh, a couple of us on the committee got kind of excited and thought maybe that could be the name of our conference. And so we shared that with somebody and or I asked actually Jeff McKay's office if that was a possibility and would it kind of be a boundary crossing? And indeed it is. So we are not going to call the conference one fair one Fairfax. We're going to call it we are Fairfax. And so that will be the theme for all four of the upcoming years. We're going to divide um, the timeline down from the uh, end of the 19th century, which will be this this year's conference, end of 19th century and prior. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and on forward and focus in on all the different groups that have immigrated into Fairfax County. When did they come in? How did that happen? Uh, what was the uh, international causal? reality that that encouraged people to land here. So <laughs> that is what uh, some of the content of the rest of the conference will be. Um, for the moment, the conference is looking to be uh, online as it was last November. It'll be November 6th from um, 9 to 1130 in the morning, 115 to 345 in the afternoon. Um, unless county guidelines change drastically, that's how it will stay. Um, uh, David, who's also on our committee, did has indicated his willingness to work on our behalf if things lift and there might be an interest to to um, schedule at Sherwood, which of course we all love. But it's also very it's kind of pricey. Okay, um, the morning of the conference is pretty well confirmed uh, thanks to um, Liz Kroll. The, the whole morning will be basically about the Native American presence in Fairfax County, which really, quite frankly, could be all four conferences. It's, it's, it's it, I mean, you know, it goes back to like 12,000 years ago. So anyway, uh, but uh, Elisa Pettit, who you've already heard um, uh, Liz uh, speak of, uh, is, a, is a potential speaker and uh, a, a number of other folks, uh, even folks from uh, Sally Lyons FOFA group may um, be part of that morning as well. So we'll have some focus on, on archaeology. Uh, we'll end up the morning with a, um, a keynote from Noah Cincinnati. Some of you are familiar with him. He is a um, history professor at um, uh, NOVA. He will be talking about the economics of slavery and how the African American community was affected. And that'll kind of be our segue into the afternoon, which will be all about 19th century um, uh, small African American com communities. Uh, the bridge for that in the afternoon will be um, a, a walkthrough of the Gum Springs Museum by by Ron Chase. You know he's been very very well loved at our at our conferences, and I, I just was at the uh, Gum Springs marker unveiling last week, which was very very moving. And I know some of my sister commissioners were there, Anne and Tammy, 
And it was really uh, an honor to see in spite of the most inclement weather, it was windy, it was wet, umbrellas turned inside out, and we stayed the course. Um, Anyway, so that's sort of the, the intro piece for the afternoon. And then we're looking at having uh, some panel discussions to talk about the small areas within Fairfax County. We had a very spirited dialogue as part of our uh, conference committee meeting about a couple of items on the conference. So we've got some things to, to iron out just yet. So not much more to report on that. And uh, we, we look like we're in a, in a pretty good place, but we do need right now. So, Liz, I will call on you and anybody else that might have some pictures, uh, documents uh, that indicate um, the, the Native American artifacts, Native American presence, um, pictures from any of the early African American communities. Obviously, um, Ron and Gum Springs can can help us there. So if you have anything in your possession or you know of something, let me know because it is time to get the save the date flyer out. It is actually a little bit later than we usually get the save the date out. But since everything's electronic now, I am noticing a lot of announcements don't even happen until a week before a meeting. So um, if you all could please help me with that, I'd like to be able to report back in in June that we have a final save the date and um, can go forth with that and share that electronically all over the all over the county. All right, our next meeting is May 26, 7:30. And conference committee, anything I left out here? Okay. All right. We will miss our food from Jason's um but I don't know, maybe we can figure out a way when we eventually do regroup to have an extra round of cookies. So anyhow, all right, that is all I have for the moment. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lynn. Any other questions, comments? Moving on to uh, Phyllis and Mary and the African American History Initiative. Uh, Phyllis, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Um, our meeting was held on uh, Tuesday, April 13th at 2.30. 11 members were in attendance. And we spent the meeting um, discussing what we wanted to put on the website um, to talk about our committee and let people know what we're doing. Um, so, so the committee discussed the draft and worked on it and approved it. And you can visit the website because uh, it's currently up there, uh, which gives not only the motion for the idea uh, that was passed in October 2020, but it also talks about the committee and what the committee is doing. Uh, commissioners from each district are researching and documenting African American history in their communities. And when the initial effort has been completed, the list will be posted on the web on the website, History Commission website. And residents are encouraged to contact their district's commissioners and with information uh, that they may have or may know. Um, that's our next meeting will be May 11th at 2.30. And Mary's gonna give you um, an update on some of the things that people are sending to us. Um, what I've been doing, uh, we're working on our individual districts, but I'm also collecting uh, information that apply to the whole county. And you'll have to apologize ahead of time for being the history teacher, because I got so excited about all this stuff and I've been inundating uh, Phyllis with, look what I found. Uh, anyway, uh, the committee should each have a draft of cemeteries and communities and historical markers um, that are associated with the African-American community. But I took this as a, a resident of Fairfax County and say, where do I go if I want to learn more? You know, I see these buildings, et cetera. So I'm gathering uh, information, like if I want to get into the historical newspaper index and online uh, for the uh, library, what kind of topics do I look up? And so I, I've done that. And I, you know, I have slavery, slavery, slave, slavery, segregation, Manassas Industrial School, colored school, et cetera, just to give them ideas of how to make a quick search to find newspapers. 
that they might be interested in. In publications, I've uh, found that there are three uh, yearbook uh, of the Historical Society publications. One is on the county fair, which I used years ago in doing some research, but it talks about the uh, quote unquote colored county fair as well as uh, the other county fairs is an excellent article. Um, there is, uh, I wrote one for the yearbook on the CCC camp at Fort Belvoir, which was a segregated uh, CCC camp who worked on fire trails, et cetera, through uh, Lake Akatink. Um, and then I found uh, there's a Negro education in Virginia uh, by a man uh, from the University of Virginia Press of 1935, which I thought might be an interesting perspective for people to look at what they were thinking about in 1935. Uh, I'm also getting information about uh, public libraries, what the Virginia Room has, Library of Virginia, what the National Archives has in uh, terms of African American uh, resources. Um, for example, I just uh, for the card catalog of the library, typed in slavery, and I found a dissertation by Donald Swig, North Virginia Slavery, a Statistical and Demographic Investigation. And, and I think it was printed in 2002. It, it sounds fascinating, uh, the research that he has done uh, looking at North Virginia uh, slavery. I've also given, uh, there is a finding aid for Fairfax County School Records and Ledgers. These ledgers are absolutely incredible. They're held at the Historic Record Center uh, where Heather is. And you can open the ledgers and see how much uh, teachers were paid, both white and uh, black, um, how much, what their terms were, you know, school terms, how many kids were in the classroom, and you definitely see a disparity. I was also amazed that there were two different teacher exams for the teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I don't know how detailed I should get in, in explaining that in the um, resource, but uh, that's what I found. I also uh, make an appointment to meet with Heather because there are other things at the archives or, or record center that I know they have, and I just don't know how accessible they are to the public. And that's the free man registers the auction information. Um, I assume there were trials associated with maybe segregation laws or whatever. Um, so she says it'll be more than a 15 minute meeting. I said, that's fine. I said, so we're gonna meet and do that. And also I'm getting the information about the Fairfax County Public School Minutes that were uh, online starting in 1922. Those were eye-opening to me also because to see uh, African American father go before the school board and ask for transportation for their uh, children to get to school. The school board agreed, and that was it. They did not provide any transportation. So that's the kind of thing that I may put in a little annotation for people to look for. Um, online, I found, uh, I think I think Phyllis already knew about this. It's called Historic Records. Desegregation of Fairfax County Public Schools, absolutely goldmine of information about how the schools were desegregated when they even had a list of what happened to the teachers who had been teaching in the segregated Luther Jackson High School, what schools they went to, which I thought was fascinating. So you can see I get in the weeds here, right? Oh, I'll awesome. move on, <laughs> I'll get faster. Um, Heather Bollinger was uh, quoted and helped uh, Wall Street Journal newspaper, and it was called Two Women Research Slavery in Their Family. And this is a story of Fairfax County and two women, white and black, each had a connection to this story and it's absolutely fascinating. So giving that information. Uh, the one that I really found, I've been working uh, with Carol and Phyllis on the Pleasant Grove marker and I knew that I'd seen a gravestone in there with the wind catcher on the gravestone, which to me indicated some type of Native American association. So I'll shorten the story, end up found out that one of the trustees at Pleasant Grove 
John Watson Mills was a Pamunkey Indian who walked from Aylet, Virginia to Fairfax, lived in Fairfax, got married in Fairfax, and was a trustee for the Pleasant Grove Church. What I found out was really interesting is that when he married, they changed his race. And they said this was common practice of an Indian left the reservation, they were considered black. Right. And so on their marriage certificate, it says husband, wife, or whatever, black on there. And so anyway, so it's another story in itself. Um, the um, Civil War trails and the National Park Service have the road to freedom about the Underground Railroad. That's a um, story that needs to be told, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I'm working on. I'm asking all the committee members, you know, anything you find that applies to the whole county, send it to me. I'm gathering it. I'll make an annotation to, you know, tell people what kinds of things they might find. Um, and I think that's it. We're working towards another 539 pages, Mary. I <laughs> More than that. Hey, Mary, um, since you and Phyllis are on this and you got the email I sent out today, uh, just so other folks know you and to confirm this, although I sent it as part of the history conference uh, packet, um, I have sent the rest of you, I have sent to um, the team and Mary, uh, and who's not on the history conference committee anymore, but uh, uh, to Phyllis um a whole lot of attachments one is is a uh, dissertation from george mason in 2014 from a man named curtis vaughn who wrote about freedom is not enough uh that african-american experience and then i've been writing uh articles for the clifton living magazine about the african-american history in the clifton fairfax station burke area and i'm getting ready to put in my eighth uh, article here for for uh, June and July. Um, so there are articles there about Beckwith heritage, the uh, James Beckworth, the cowboy, uh, Warner Melvin, who I know Liz knows quite a bit about, um, the Jeremiah Jackson family of uh, of what is now Burke, uh, and they have a walking story of a seven year old who during the Civil War walked from Northern Virginia to Vermont to stay with Jeremiah Jackson, who was a freed man and had an enormous swath of land uh, in what is now uh, Burke and Fairfax. He walked from Fairfax up to Vermont to basically move in and live with the man who had been Jeremiah Jackson's teacher as a younger man, teacher and her husband. So, um, really kind of a, a lot of fascinating stories there too. So you'll, I, as I continue to write those articles, I'll just keep passing them on to you guys. Well, Lynn, you will include those in your Springfield district under publications. Because well, they sure. refer to Springfield district primarily, right? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it'd be under your publication list. Okay, all right. Well, whatever. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Just make sure you get them, yeah. I just wanted to make sure you guys saw it. And, and Mary, since you're not on that distribution list, I wanted you to know, and Phyllis has yeah. comments of all that too, but I can, I can go ahead and CC that it's all to you. All right, okay. that's all. All right, thank you. Very, very exciting. Fine, Mary, th uh, thank you. Um, sorry, just lost my, sp oh, oh, Mary, did Gretchen, task you with making a report for the summary? She did not, but I read her report and I could just really quickly summarize it. Sure. Uh, we are, uh, work group is meeting on organizing committees um, and there are eight of them that are outlined and also inviting more members uh, to join uh, the task force. The report is due uh, to the Board of Supervisors in July. So we have a short amount of time. Uh, to get all this together. And uh, Gretchen said that she listed the members of the History Commission Committee part of this, and we have not met yet, but we're waiting till the report gets in. Okay. You're muted, Cheryl. 
sorry, I thought I was on I thought I unmuted myself. Um, I, I didn't notice that the list was of all the committee members were there. So uh, thank you, Mary, Sue and Jordan for helping Gretchen out on this uh, uh, two, 250th anniversary. Right. Uh, Elise. I have nothing to report for any of the three committees. Okay, <laughs> that makes it easy. <laughs> uh, uh, markers and or cemetery preservation. Now it's your turn to unmute yourself, Mary. Muted. Sorry. That's a, here I am with, for markers. We're uh, we're working on um, finalizing the text for the Pleasant Grove uh, church marker, and also finding ownership of the property. I have the county helping me with that because that is very challenging uh, to find out who actually owns that property where we can put up a marker. Um, James Lee and Carrolltown are still in the works. They always say eight to 12 weeks. Well, it's just been eight weeks since I submitted it. So uh, waiting on those. And Sue and I will be in a meeting next Friday, May 14th, uh, with REA calendar and Supervisor Palachek and many other people on the list to discuss the history uh, marker contest um, that uh, Supervisor Palachek's office is uh, sponsoring. Uh, so that's it for the marker for um, cemetery committee for the history commission. I've been waiting for our MOU and <laughs> when we have our MOU, I mean, I think we'll be off and running, but I can tell you personally for our little association. Um, we're trying to work with the Payne cemetery in cemetery, cemetery, uh, Payne cemetery in Centerville. Uh, at a request of a neighbor. Uh, the Ford Ellis Summer Cemetery on, um, and we actually walked in off of Seneca Road, but its actual address is Sherman Court. The property is up for sale, and it's really interesting. The realtor has put that there are burials on the plot. Do, do not call it a cemetery, but it's definitely fenced off 30 by 60 foot cemetery. They says there's burials on the ground, uh, maintenance and easement will be required, and a historic marker will be required. So that's in the sales uh, from Jonas. Uh, still working on the Neal um, Family Cemetery, getting recognition for that. That's on Sutton Road. And uh, Blake Myers and I uh, met with the uh, uh, members of the HOA of the in the uh, Carter Tolliver Cemetery, uh, and they're really excited to get into uh, how to um, uh, preserve the cemetery and actually have contacted VDHR. They're going to come back in and look at it and uh, give some advice on what can do that with that and the Willie Preston uh, gravesite. So that is it. There we go. Sorry about that. At the very beginning, Mary, you said something about a marker that you're trying to identify where it's located. No, no, it it's where the Pleasant Grove marker, which is um, the Friends of Pleasant Grove own the building, but the ownership of the land, uh, we're not sure. And I, I've got the county involved in it because if you okay. go through the tax records, uh, it's it's very confusing um, and there's two different addresses for the location. So that's what we're working on right now. Okay, as long as you have help, that's that's all. I just okay. want to confirm yeah. that. This is, right. the Pleasant, this is the Pleasant Grove that's on Lewinsville Road. Correct. Greensville. Okay. This is Carol. It's very confusing because Pleasant Grove has a 99 year lease on the building but a church owns the ground underneath the building. So it's complicated for Mary to uh, where to put the sign. Mm -hmm. Well, it's actually, like, Carol, the church is not even listed as owner according to Fairfax County tax records. Oh, I so know that's that. Why, I, yeah. I, I know that. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're trying to figure out who can give permission to put that pole in the ground. <laughs> so. 
So. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, moving along. Yes, sir. Ethnic and oral history. We have some exciting news. Yes. Yes, very exciting. The Ethnic and Oral History Committee has eight members that work with me, and we're pleased to announce that we've kicked off our oral history presentation. I've got so many pieces of paper here, but I want to let you know that it is an initiative that I sent letters to some of the past supervisors to be uh, interviewed. And they are being interviewed by the commissioners. And they've done a lovely job. Channel 16 is going to tape for us. And the goal is to have a TV show. Okay. So this is an ongoing project and we're so happy to say that we've done at least uh, enough of the interviews to say that we've started. We've had people cancel on us. We've had uh, situations like Jerry Connolly's always busy with bigger things, but he has said that he will participate so we'll continue to work at that and try to get his interview in May. Uh, I sent a letter and that was reviewed by our chair and she put her signature on it. I sent a letter out to each of the four that we were trying to gain interviews for in this first segment. Channel 16 goes in quarters. And right now they're in, I think what they call the fourth quarter. And they wanted to do four of the interviews this quarter and then four the next. So we ran into a problem because we couldn't find one person, another person's uh, health interfered with being interviewed. And then uh, one had uh, a problem with a conflict at work. Uh, we can't do anything about that. It's kind of like the Jerry Conley situation. We just need to work with them because they're still busy people even though they're retired. But uh, I had worked up the letter and worked up the questions as, as we put together from Mary's suggestion and committee suggestion. And I sent those as well as the release form to the supervisors, the past supervisors that were being interviewed. So we have an oral history project in process. We tape at channel 16, which is in the government center uh, building. And we are open for volunteers at any time. I will be contacting you in the future to see what you'll do for us. Tammy did a lovely job. Uh, Mary did a lovely job interviewing. And we're still trying to get Lynn's interview out there with Jared Conley. But we hope to do more of these. And we'll get Ann Morris back out there too. <laughs> so we'll keep you aware of the progress. The title is Fairfax County Looks Back at Our Recent History. And the next line, the subtitle would be the latter part of the 20th century and first early part of the 21st century. So we'll keep you apprised, but if you have any contacts with some of the retired supervisors, let us know because that's the hardest part, just trying to find them with a number or an email or anything. So, 
to do is get Linda Smith's contact? Not yet. Okay, so I have send that. I, I have that, but I don't. Can I send it just to your email? She, yes, please. She doesn't, she doesn't like a lot of people to know. So, okay, thanks. Okay, just send it to my email. Now, did you decide you're going to interview Sue? To interview, interview her? I, I don't know. I mean, okay, we'll talk. <laughs> I'd love to interview Jerry Connolly because I think well, wouldn't we all if we could just get him to an interview? <laughs> that's the problem. That's that's, that's been my problem. problem three times. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, Lynn and I go way back with Jerry coming to the conferences and all. So we'll talk about that. But if there's okay. someone in particular that you'd like to interview, I'd like to hear about. It. Because we want this to be comfortable for them as well as for the interviewer. And there is a list of things that you wear for a TV uh, spot, like don't wear bright, bright red, or don't wear black because it, it uh, does things to the camera. So I have little tips from, from Channel 16, but it's been a wonderful experience just working with it. And I look forward to working with each of you on an interview. And uh, committee, I'd like us to meet, if at all possible, on May uh, 18th. Let me know if that is possible and I will get back to Denise to confirm. That's a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. At 7 p.m., we'll do a WebEx. Oh, gosh darn. Esther, I'm in a webinar that night until 7.30. Okay, just send me, just send me your availability for that week, each of you. Okay, sounds good. And our new member, our new commissioner, we'd love to have you on the committee. So, Feel free to attend our committee me meeting. I, I will send you the invitation. All right. Look forward Excellent. to it, Esther. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, sir. Any All right. questions? Okay. This is the first phase. We look forward to getting into the second group of interviews, at least four. And that will be late July. That's all that uh, Channel 16 could tell me right now. Probably late July. And then we'll move every quarter into four more interviews. The ultimate is to get these interviews out there and let different groups and different people see how easy it is to do the oral history and then write up some training for them as far as what to do, what not to do, some guidelines, and even maybe play act one. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been about. We've been very excited to do this, and we look forward to doing some more. Now, that's what other uh -huh. didn't, didn't Didn't Pam say it was okay to wear leopard? <laughs> she didn't mention leopard. No okay. stripes. I, I yeah, I didn't think it was on. No a stripes, so no tiger. <laughs> leopard and a zebra. <laughs> leopard, leopard Sorry. was not mentioned, so we assume it's okay. Uh, I was contacted by a Drew. What's his last name? Oh gosh, Gruber. 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 Yes, yes, that's quite a name. Okay, Drew Gruber is the executive director of Civil War Trails. And he asked for a quote on something that they're doing. Now, this is not uh, on their whole being. This is just on this part of it. He asked that they're getting ready to install the first bilingual Civil War trails in the country at the Ox Hill Battlefield. Mm -hmm. 
and he was so excited about it. It's a sign that's going to be translated into Spanish and Korea so that the residents in that area in particular can read the sign. What a marvelous idea. Why didn't we think of that? And that Mary? actually was installed last week, uh, Esther. What's that? I said the sign was installed last week. At okay. Oxford. So this is part of his promotion. Thank you, Liz. This is part of his promotion just to endorse the fact that they're doing a bilingual sign. And I did write something up and I contacted Cheryl and sent it off to him. And he was delighted to get a quote. And basically it said that we promote education and having the sign in those languages so other people could read it. That's basically what it said. Any questions? Um, one question I would have is, is, I mean, you're saying that the sign is actually available in multiple languages. I have not seen the sign. To well, know I guess that it I mean, is. right Liz. now, I mean, you go to a restaurant and you use your phone, you know, and you can. You can translate it, yes. You I know code to see the menu. I mean, could that not be an integral part of, of historic signage so that it would be available in multiple languages? I mean, Interesting some sort of concept. A, we'll oh, pass yeah, that on to Mary's committee. We'll pass that on to Mary's committee. But in this particular case, they were constructing a sign to back up the main sign. Liz, do you know if they converted it already? Yes, it is. There's um, there's a, a short description on the sign that's in each of the languages. Great. And I will get a copy from them of, you know, yes. like an image of it, and then I'll send it to you all. I, I you can thank you. Actually, and, and it's holding something up you there. You can kind of see some of the, I don't know if you guys can get that close, but it's got it in several languages Wonderful. on the map. But I think there that's was a something little... to think about. Yeah. I believe there was a little article it about is, it in I the Washington very Post. Deep. Oh, in today's post? Yeah, no, I think it was a couple of days ago. I saw okay. a Facebook post and I think it linked to the uh to the post. article. And oh, you yeah, can see a picture of the sign. You're 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 in the Washingtonian. Whoa. There she is. Inclusiveness make me and happy. Inclusiveness and accuracy are essential in recording and relaying true history to all, said Esther McCullough. Thank you. That was a good quote. Yay, yeah, yes, Thank you. Okay, that's my 15 minutes of fame. Let's move on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I, you. I got a Cheryl. quick question. This is this is Chris for, for Esther. Uh one, what is a request? Um can the Virginia Room get a copy of those channel 16 interviews, maybe on DVD, just so we have a preservation copy for it? Adam. The channel 16 interviews, yes, will certainly be in the Virginia Room. All right, and then that's when I put them, Chris. I just had to make sure it wasn't said. <laughs> yes, they will have them in whatever form you need it, and and we will work on that. Great, and then okay. um, last question: Is there going to be a transcript of any of the interviews, or is uh, it just going to be a recording? Well, right now it's just the recording, but we can work that out. Okay, no, I'm just curious. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's move along to um, Robert. Cheryl, can I interrupt for a second? This is Mary. Right. Can I interrupt for just a second? Uh huh. I just found out our markers can be done two sided. So if we wanted to put one side in English and one side in another language, I, I don't know. I don't know if the uh foundry has done a different language but i do know that's capable capable of doing that it costs about 700 dollars more to do right. the second side 
but just putting oh, that thanks. out for future reference for those of you thinking about markers and et cetera, okay? I'll mention that to the committee, but they were very definite on what they what they wanted. So right. I'll mention it. Thank you. Okay. I would I would suggest the possibility of just as was mentioned earlier, putting QR QR codes on the signs so people can just put their their phones in front of it, take a picture, and it would automatically um, they would have a choice, a scroll down menu to to choose the um, the language that they want, hit the button, and then they'd be able to stand there and read in their on their phone whatever language they chose. Yeah. Excellent idea. Yeah, and it's, it's a metal something we uh, can uh, add to the signs. It's a it's a metal sign, so I'm not sure how well it would take right. the uh, you know whether the resolution would be high enough for a for a QR code to be embedded into the metal. Well, I mean, maybe we could have an all another sign close by. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, okay. Some sort of has yeah. a polymer surface to it that doesn't yeah. fade with the sun, and you know, we could do it that way. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe there's a sticker that would go on the metal sign that we had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, Esther. I know that some signage does have stickers. On, um, do have stickers with QR codes. Definitely, we're thinking for about. graves. The latest thing for gravestones is to have those, and you get a message from the deceased. Thank um, you, no. Mary. <laughs> oh, you mean this is making so much fun? <laughs> I want uh, that. Uh, all right, uh, Bob. What about, Bob what's going on with the resident curator program? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, yeah, update on that. Um, uh, the uh, premiere of the Hannah P. Clark and Yeti uh, virtual open house will occur on uh, Saturday the 15th at 10 a.m. Uh, a few days before the event, a YouTube link uh, for the video will be made available upon um, the Resident Curator Program's website. Uh, the Board of Supervisors uh, public hearing for the RCP lease for the service source at Elmore Farm will be held on May 4th uh, of this year. Um, well, obviously, um, that happened yesterday. The curator of the Turner Farmhouse continues with improvements to the farmhouse interior, including painting interior trim. Uh, with the um, While the uh, special exception application is under department and a planning and zoning review, a virtual open house uh, event will occur later in May. Um, the premiere of the Stemson House virtual open house uh, will occur on Saturday, May 1st. Again, missed that one. Um, at 11 a.m., uh, a few days before the event, you could get the YouTube. I, I bet you can probably still get that on as a, a re, rerun. Um, and uh, the curator will begin covered porch repairs uh, in the upcoming months. And the septic evaluation under the, at the, is underway at the Margaret White Gardens. That's the extent of that report. Thank you. Thank you. And I noticed uh, the uh, the resident curated program was in uh, Chairman McKay's uh, newsletter this this past week or so. Yay! Um, yay! Yay! Mm -hmm. uh, Anne, bylaws. Oh, I'm sorry. Was there any questions? I didn't. I didn't mean to. Uh... Okay. All right. Bylaws, Anne. All right. Okay. For the bylaws committee, we met on. April the 29th, and it was a very, very good meeting. It was a good sized meeting, and we met for less than an hour. And we went over the um, edits that were done that were previously discussed, and um, uh, we made some recommendations for just some of the terminology. And um, that information was passed along to the county attorney uh, for comment, and we have not had that back yet. So. We just met last week on the 29th of April. And um, so we're waiting for those those comments before we present the um, bylaws version with the, that we were asked to conform with the, the format before we present it to the commission. And um, 
Okay, so you're still on? I I'm am. Pushing. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm sorry. To... I missed a question. Did Did you ask me a question? Well, I was going to ask you. I, I did mention about uh, the information that was passed along to the county attorney. Uh, we did have some recommendations, um, but there was some question about whether or not we could use certain terminology. Um, it was probably more administrative than anything else. And then we had some questions about uh, the um, the distribution, um, how we were going to make that distribution so that each member of the committee could get it. And um, I think that was that was it. So that's where we that's where we were. We we had a meeting uh, last week, and all the committee members were there. Uh, most of them were there, and uh, that was it. Did we leave anything out? Okay, we want to eventually get back to meeting maybe once or twice a year. <laughs> but uh, we, we do have to get the, the, the steps of bylaws approved by the commission as well as uh, and um, for it to the uh, yeah, yeah, we, we're making real progress. We had to do yeah. redo the. We reformat a lot of things there. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions about bylaws? That'd be great. And uh, Anne, do you have anything to say about advocacy? Keep not meeting. Um, you guys are all so good who meet. Those, stop it, Barbara Peters. Um, we will get started again. We lost a lot of steam in the COVID years and um but that's no excuse at all it's just we haven't gotten to it but we will right team well i i, I will mention and that uh, that Subi was interested in um the strategic re uh, plan that greg was working on so um oh no great awesome <laughs> um all right uh at least arb uh update Where is she? Sorry, I put the word document on my screen and forgot oh, about the oh. unmute. Oh, um, I got my feet wet by writing a short one for tonight for the April meeting, and I just finished writing the multi month one that will be passed on to you for the next meeting. Oh, good. Um, let me open my Word document again. At the April 8, 2021 ARB meeting, there were no consent items. There were three action items that were all approved. A proposal for a retail dumpster enclosure for the retail store in the, for a retail store in the Laurel Hill Adaptive Reuse Area. The Friends Meeting House is replacing their porch. And we approved the conversion of a Verizon store into the Barbaria Grooming and Lounge Salon in the Centerville Historic Overlay District. And there were no workshops or no presentations. All right, thank you. Any, any Cheryl questions? Cheryl doesn't have any issues with the Barbaria. I I I am pleased to see that uh, that the store is not going to remain empty actually so use mm -hmm. is good um and and you know i could always use a haircut so yeah, it's a good thing um david let's update us any about fairfax city well we did have a discussion a few a few minutes ago about the initiative so no need to mention that um the only thing I'll report is after 14, almost 14 months of being closed on Monday, May 3, the Fairfax City Museum has reopened. So we're, um, of course, we're, we're uh, observing safe practices for our visitors. 
but we're very pleased that the museum is now open again to the public. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I have to report. Cool. Nice to be getting a little bit back to normal. Um, uh, in terms of the website, uh, as was mentioned earlier, the African American Inventory Committee now has its own page. Um, and there is a, a descriptive paragraph on the home page that links to the inventory page. There's also a link on the what's called the nav bar on the side of the of the website to you know the, to the uh, inventory committee page. Uh, we also have a contact information now for for Subi and. Uh, and finally, Mary, I am so sorry it took me forever. We finally updated the questions for the footsteps to Fairfax Trail. Um, so that's that update is there. Um, does anybody have any announcements that they want to share with the group? I've got two. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this I'll go last. All right, go ahead, All right, I'll go first. Uh, one is very easy. Um, at Colvin Run Mill, they had a dedication last Sunday for the new water wheel there, and uh, I attended. It was very nice. I was the only History Commission member there, so I was delighted that, that I had attended. But uh, that's back and operating, and it was, it was fantastic. In fact, there was something on, I think, Channel 7 last night about that. But anyway, it was very nice. Um, the other thing is the Virginia home and garden um, group um, has their annual event, uh, and it was a couple weeks ago, early May, or late April, excuse me. And uh, there were three places, I believe, in Fairfax County, um, and Stunts is really involved in this, like head honcho type of thing, even though she doesn't have that title. And um, Ballantrae, uh, a home in uh, McLean was on the garden tour. And on that tour, uh, they were advertising a small house on the property as being 1847. And um, I've always had difficulty with that date. And uh, the owner came up and we were talking about it and he seemed to have a little difficulty with the date also. And uh, Bob Beach has generally offered that he will go and take a look from an architectural point of view and see if we can get a grip on the date of this house. It's definitely, um, what do I want to say, 1930, but um, it possibly could be 1847. But we're going to check into it thanks to Bob. And That's Carol? It. Carol? Yes. Did you yeah. say that? that he would put the house separately on the inventory, perhaps? Um, yes, he seemed to be interested in that, yes. Isn't that neat? But let, it, let us see what we come up with first before we get to that stage. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right, yeah, that's, what we're, that's kind of what we're looking at, but it would be too, it might be more than one properties on there, so let us see what we come up with. But Bob is going to give it um, give it his eyeballs. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> You're welcome, I, Carol. I had a couple things. One, the coolest thing uh, on my list of two is Vienna's Liberty Amendments Month, which is trying to rival how great Fairfax City is. All we can do is try, David. Liberty Amendments Month is running from Juneteenth until July 19th. It really is four weeks of constitutional history. And the whole of the town of Vienna is so excited about this. You can't believe it. At first you think, hmm, constitutional amendments. That sounds so exciting. Um, but <laughs> It is. We have got we've got all sorts of things arranged around each week. The the three um, amendments are uh, 13th to abolish slavery, 14th to address citizens' rights. There's lots more we can say about that. Equal protection, 15th to give the vote to men, and 19th 
the vote to women. And it's we're doing art, public art and stories and lectures and it's it's exhibits and um, tours. And it's this is the first year we're doing it. And the May, the governor of Virginia signed a proclamation to make it Liberty Amendments Month. So when we get the schedule of events, and a lot of them will be Zoom, so you can join us without driving halfway across the county. So I'll just I'll just share with you when the time comes. We are still approving events. And then um, the other thing I wanted just to mention quickly is that I did hear Dorothy Cantor give a program yesterday on Rosenwald Schools, and she's the the one who is in charge of the National Historic Park for um, to raise money to create this National Historic Park that we put our name behind with a list of others. Thank you, Jordan. And um, and she was just she was very, you know, does a, an excellent program. She did a, um, a joint program with the author of a book called You Need a Schoolhouse. That's all about the, the, the Rosenwalds. So that's mine. I have one. Um, I'm clearing files, as some of you know, and um, I found a a large cache of early rest, and this is like from 66 to 73. We were here, we arrived in 68. So I took them over to the Reston Museum to see if they were interested, and they're taking um, about half of them. They take, and so that's exciting because it's, I've been here so long that not, not a lot of people saved them apparently. So I was very happy to see that they're going into the Reston Museum archives. Um, she had listened to our Anne and, and my presentations at the town hall. And so she then, um, this is the, this is Alex Campbell, who is the, the director. So she pulled um, and did a sort and pulled all of the documents they have regarding blacks in Reston. And so we, I have sent that on to Phyllis and that'll be part of our, and to Mary, and that'll be part of our Hunter Mill publications list, but it's a sizable list. So that's, that's exciting. I think so. Those are my announcements. Thanks. I have an announcement. Um, got a call from the White House personnel office uh, at the beginning of the week. Uh, and I am being renewed for another year for another four year term on the Yay! Advisory Council. Yay! Yay! And I'm being elevated to vice chair. So Whoa. Wow. that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Having having been vice chair of the commission, this is is this a step sure. up, a step <laughs> over? I hope they don't I hope they don't ask me to write the annual report. <laughs> <laughs> I think and think about how much trouble Jordan's going to get into there. Yeah. Yes, it's great, great. So Jordan is at elevated or levitated. Yeah, right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. I, I knew yeah. you win. <laughs> I have one. Um, Irma Clifton's papers, her original DVDs, her photographs, all those things that pertain to Lorton, to the prison workhouse, to Fairfax okay. County, have been left with the Lorton Heritage Society. And we're going to be working with Chris Barbacek to curate and place the items that we have, especially those that are appropriate to go into the Virginia room. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I would, would like to share um, last weekend my DAR chapter um, both got a grant to pay for all the signage, but uh, participated in the uh, Women's History Walk in Falls Church. This is the fifth annual um, event, and uh, and it was really fun to to be a part of. It. Cool. Is that it? Can I go last now? You've claimed last if you're, okay. if you know, that's, that's it. it. All right. First of all, I've gone down to the Eastern shore. Okay. And I figured out how to do that tonight. Um, two things you can imagine during COVID how much I've missed my reenacting. I mean, really, I have 
totally missed that. However, next Monday, I will be reenacting Mrs. Robert Walker for some children at Burke Presbyterian Church who are in a tutoring program there. We've got it all figured out. So everybody's going to be socially distanced and wearing masks um, other than me. And uh, I'm very, very, very excited to to let these little people learn about the realities of women getting the right to vote. So that's happening. And on the 16th of May, there is kind of a quiet, uh, formal uh, dedication at Turning Point Suffragist Memorial. And this is Robert Walker. We'll be going there too. Unmasked. Yes. Right. All right. Anybody? Well, Lynn, Lynn said she was last, so I, I I don't know that I can violate that uh, that position, that status there. Uh, no, no, no. I meant like I can't you know can't ask for anybody else to to chime in. Um, so I think uh, that we have completed our business for uh, tonight, and uh, we we don't do a motion for adjournment, do we? Or do we? We need a motion Whatever for adjournment. Is, I make the motion. We adjourn. Yeah, use the gavel. Use the gavel. Use the gavel. Yeah. So we are we are officially adjourned. Uh, <laughs> okay. Excellent. Before ten o'clock.